Um, yes, I grew up in Florissant, and um, I went to Parker Road Elementary School, Florissant Junior High, and McClure High School. Um, I, moved to I moved to University City about 42 years ago and uh, raised my children, and I moved back five years ago, and I live on the same street that I grew up on, on Saddle Drive <laughs> by the Civic Center. I could not believe it. Um, I've always loved to sew. And I have sewed since I was a little girl. I started embroidering when I was about the age between five and six years old. My mother taught me, and I, my babysitter helped me. And um, I made my first dress in the sixth grade, uh, sewing 101. Does anybody remember J.C. Penney's at Grandview Plaza? Well, they had a great fabric department, and I spent a lot of time there getting my fabric. And um, I took home economics in the. Um, junior high and then at McClure High School I took uh, clothing and tailoring and then I went to the famous and bar at Northland and they had a fantastic department in fabric and they had wool and that's what, where I would go after that. Um, after that I uh, graduated from high school and I started college and I was studying design and illustration um, it didn't last long. I was in a very bad car accident, so I had to stay out of school for several years. And when I went back, I thought, that's something I can't do to make a living. So I changed gears, and I pursued a, a career in dental hygiene. And I've been a hygienist for almost 40 years. But there was something missing with dental hygiene. I mean, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't creative. I got tired of hearing scraping noises. So a friend of mine in dental hygiene school said to me, would you like to take a quilting class? And I said, oh my gosh, I would love to. But my son Christopher was only an infant. He was born uh, in the end of 81, and this was like that winter, the bad winter. And so I asked my husband if he thought we could do it, and he said yes. So I took my first quilting class at a quilt shop out on Mason and Clayton Road. And I don't know the name of it because it's been gone for a long time. Um, my second class I took over in Webster Groves and that quilt I made a double wedding ring. We used cardboard tent plates and we used um, like a real fine sandpaper that I used to glue on there and cut it out. I would use rubber cement and that's how I made my templates. Um, after I used cardboard they went to plastic which was great because you could draw on it with a pencil and save it and um, I pieced by hand for about 20 years with plastic. And uh, I made a lot of quilts, but not as many as I do now, because about 10 years ago, I started working with Christy over at Helen's Hen House. She bought it when Joan was very ill, and I went to see her. And Christy said, can you work for me? And I said, I have a full-time job, but how about every other Friday? So I started working there every other Friday and sometimes on Saturday. And they introduced me to the rotary cutter and the mat about 10 years ago. I went berserk. I sewed every night after work. I couldn't stop. I'm addicted to sewing. The rotary cutter and sewing on the machine makes it a lot easier. And so I basically went crazy. I used to make uh, samples for the store, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I quit working over at um, Helen's Hen House because I wanted to do other things on Friday. Um, besides work, I worked Monday through Thursday, so I decided just to have fun and go visit quilt shops. Um, this, this, which I frequent all the time, all over. So um, once I really started to use um, machine piecing and machine quilting, um, I made this quilt uh, in about 2015. And um, it was a class I took over in Wood River uh, at a friend's shop. It's called Patchwork Plus. And it was an 18-month class. And I, and I finished it in about two years with putting it together and everything. And it's the Civil War Love Letters quilt. And uh, I've made several quilts similar to this. Um, they're not put together. But this <laughs> one's put together. And I won a little ribbon up there uh, a couple years ago. And this is like one of my favorite quilts I've ever made. It took a long time. Um, my favorite types of fabrics are reproduction fabrics. I love the rich colors, the dark colors. 
Um, I like florals and I love wool. I'm really into the wool now, so that's my newfound love. Um, so, like I said, this is Civil War love letters, and then I'm going to start showing you some of my uh, fab uh, quilts made with the reproduction fabric. So, this one. Okay, this is the top. This one is called the Underground Railroad, and each block has a, has a meaning to it. Let's see. Uh, I just want to make sure that the ship isn't upside down, and it, this is the top of it here. So it's hard to, when you fold things up and you storm in a camp. Anyway, this is the Underground Railroad quilt, and I did that in, um, in a little club that I belonged to years ago called Civil War Sewing Circle. And that was one of the um, quilts that we were able to make. And it was the designer, um, her name was Eleanor Burns, and they said it was called um, Quilt in a Day, which I think is ridiculous. Who can, make, <laughs> who can make this in a day? It took me months. I did cut everything out. It took about a week um, because I put them in little bags because each block was uh, coordinated, color coordinated. But that was the Underground Railroad block. And then here's the story right here to it. So it was really cool. Each block has a meaning. They used to hang quilts on the fences for the Underground Railroad. And each, each um, block has a symbol, like which direction to go. And people, a lot of people think, oh, that really didn't happen. I think it did. You know, because too, a lot of people were able to go north and, and, and get there safely. So this is the Underground Railroad quilt. Just fold it up. Um, we can just put them on the furniture over there and I can fold them up later. So here is another reproduction quilt. Um, I really love pink and brown. And um, this quilt is a Barbara Brackman quilt. And uh, once again, it was a quilt that was made in my. Uh, Civil War Sewing Circle. It was supposed to be a, a one-year project, which turned into a two. And um, I had all the blocks made, and then one year at the retreat, I had all of the intersections made in advance and, and labeled. And so what I did was I put it all together at the retreat, about two and a half days. But all the blocks were finished. So I had... Uh, a large area of the floor that I used and I s set that up. So this is called Sweet Cherry Wine and this is uh, a Barbara Brackman quilt. Um, I did miter the corners on this one with help so that I could use my pattern of the stripes to go all the way around. There are a few pieces of wool on this quilt. I like to put wool on some of my quilts. Um, I don't know where, it, here's one right here. I used the wool in in one of the blocks. There's another one too with a basket. So, okay, you wanna come over and help yeah, just take? I don't wash these. <laughs> these are for show. I mean, you know, I will never wash that quilt. <laughs> um, I, um, I went on a trip, I met my parents and my brother in Atlanta and we went to Charleston, South Carolina. And I had seen in Quilt Mania, which was a magazine we used to get at Helen's Hen House, they had three different types, Australia, Ireland, and France. I don't remember which one this came out of, but the name of the pattern was called Charleston. So I thought, well, heck, I'm going to Charleston. I'm going to make this quilt. So I made the quilt named Charleston from the fabric I bought in Charleston. And it's a simple pattern, okay? It's a, it's a churn dash pattern with flying geese going up, it, all in fall colors. And my mother and father and brother said, well, what do you want to do when we go to Charleston because it was a historic city? I said, oh, I want to go to that quilt shop that's over on, at the park. And he, they go, what? <laughs> We're going to Fort Sumter. And I go, I know, and I'm going to the quilt shop. <laughs> So at the quilt shop was where I bought all of this fabric to make my quilt named Charleston from Charleston. So just take them over and I can. Okay. Um, 
This was also reproduction, and then some of it wasn't. This was a sampler quilt that I've always loved, because I love these dark colors. A lot of people don't like dark colors, but I do, and so I made this at Helen's Hen House, and every, um, every month we had a block. And so after I made this, and Vicki made this uh, quilt too, um, we would um, put it together and each one of them looked different, but they were all the same quilt because we all used different fabric. And I didn't even name this quilt. This is just a sampler quilt. So anyway, I really, uh, what started me off was this outside fabric and then I kind of pulled all my colors from that. And sometimes I'll do that. Um, I'll find a pattern that I love for the border on the outside, and then I'll just go with that. And then sometimes I'll think of a name, and then I go with that, too. Um, I have quirky names for a lot of my quilts. It doesn't seem like you see too many ones with black in there like that. You know, I went through an Amish phase once, and these I can hold up, I think, myself. Okay. So these are also reproduction quilts, but they're, well, maybe I'll have, but I'm, these are wall hangings. So this one is another Barbara Brackman quilt that I made in Civil War Sewing Circle. And um, it's a Yankee Doodle Dandy. And uh, my friend that owns a quilt shop over in Wood River, Jan Copeland, she um, quilted this, this for me to make it look like the flag was blowing. So it has the monofilament um, thread that's clear and um, so that it looks like a flag and you can't see the thread. So she was able to run over my wool it didn't call for wool, but I put it on mine. And so um, you can run over it and it doesn't show. So that's Yankee Doodle Dandy. Okay, this one um, I put in the quilt show last year. This was um, a quilt that was, um, let's see, this one was a, a Kindred Spirits. They're from, um, Iowa, I believe. Anyway, um, I named this one, what did I name this one? Uh, Sweet Freedom. It's called the Star Studded Galaxy. And this fabric, I used the last of it, um, was a designer and it was the Civil War battles with the African American soldiers in it and I bought like yardage in it so I finished using that. And um, so this little quilt right here, um, like Dancing Stars. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show the back. This was um, the fabric that I used. And it looks like explosion of fireworks on the front of it. You can come up later and look at this. It, it turned out really cool. This was hard because we had to do it in rows. And you had to have your fabric all laid down each row as you went or else you didn't know where you were going with it. Okay, so this is another um, Kindred Spirit one. This is Ring Around the Posy. It's just a little um, wall hanging size. Here's the top of it. I put sleeves on most of them so I can hang them on a rod. And um, this is just regular fabric that I did the buttonhole stitch around, but I decided to try to do it all in black thread. Uh, I've never done that, so this is my first one that I just used black thread around the whole thing. Thank you. Okay, now this one, um, there's a, a lady that came to our guild several years ago by the name of Becky Wright, and she's a Civil War enthusiast, and she had two workshops, and of, of course I took both of them. So here's one of them that I took, one of them that I made. And um, so it was, I don't remember the name of this quilt, but there were several of us in the guild that made it, and I, I really like it. These are cute, just laying on a table, you know, like for a little tablecloth. Um, this was also another one of Becky Wright's um, quilt patterns. I made mine smaller because I'm like, I have so many large quilts. Sometimes when I have the opportunity to make something small, I'll just kind of miniaturize it. So that was also a Becky Wright quilt. This one isn't quilted, I just tied it. So there's like little ties on the back. So this one came out of a book called uh, Civil War Legacies. And we also made this in Civil War Sewing Circle, the girls. We would pick things out and we would make stuff every periodically, every three months we'd make one. I like the mustard color. 
And this one was, uh, I named this one, Call Me the Breeze, Powered by Wind, because it looks like little wind. Each one of these has like a little pinwheel in the center. That was a challenge to do that. They were small. Okay. Now, this one was a Flower Valley um, challenge um, two years ago. And so um, I was on the committee, so um, it was something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. So I have old fabric in it, borrowed templates, blue, and um, new, some new fabric. But a lot of it was old. So I named it Cross Road Traffic, and then I made a large label on it to describe everything that I had done. But I like red, white, and blue quilts, so that could be on a table also. There we go. Okay, so the next part we're going to do is my Christmas quilts. So um, I have a lot more of them at home, but I thought I'm just going to bring a few. So. Um, this was my very first Christmas quilt I made years ago. And it's very hard to find Christmas fabric that's reproduction, but there used to be a store over in St. Charles called Patches, and I saw the fabric there, and I loved it, but I didn't know what I was going to make with it. So I started making this, this quilt. I put this on my dining room table at Christmas. And um, I had to go back a couple times to get more because I was running out. But um, anyway, this was my very first Christmas quilt, the log cabin pattern on a furrow on the diagonal. And with the fabric that I had left over, I made the matching baby one, Aww. which is like one of my favorite quilts I've ever made, even though it, you know, it's so small, but it's just like that one, but a, a baby one. With, um, they call this miniature, with the little <laughs> tiny blocks. Okay, now this one is a kaleidoscope quilt. My friend Jan that owns the quilt shop, it was one of her patterns, and it's a kaleidoscope. And um, her, her line of patterns is naked without my quilts. And so... Anyway, there, I bought the fabric at Jackman's because I loved this bird fabric. And this one, you, it's kind of like a stack and whack. You stack it all up and you cut it at the same time after you stick pins in it to get it to all come out even. So it looks like kind of a pinwheel. But the hard part was I wasn't going to cut the heads off of the birds. <laughs> and so I was trying to place the fabric so I wouldn't have to um, cut their heads off. So, I mean... Some of them are pretty close, but uh, I was able to not cut their heads off, and the entire quilt is quilted with little cherub birdies, that, like little fat belly birds. And so it's really cute, but you can't see the quilting too well on the back because I used the bittersweet fabric, and there's my label. It's a little birdie. But this was a fun project. <clears throat> Um, has anybody heard of jelly roll quilts? Okay, they, they used to call them worms. And then somebody decided they didn't want to call it a worm anymore, and so they called it a jelly roll. Um, about hmm, two years ago or so, I went up to Missouri Star Quilt Company. They were doing a class up there called It's in the Bag. So a friend of mine that likes to travel with me, we went up there to take the class. And we were there for three nights and four days. Well. I made my bags and I met these girls from Montana. There wasn't anybody there from Missouri except for myself and Carol, my friend. They were from everywhere. There was girls there from Alaska, Florida, California, New York, Texas. Well, these girls were from Montana and they were sister-in-laws and they were making a quilt. And I said, I want to make one. So they told me how to cut my jelly roll quilt and then I went back and I got a lot more of the border fabric and I proceeded to make it. And I had all of my blocks cut and made by the time I left. But it's simple because you cut the long strips and then you cut them up. So it was really enjoyable. So um, I decided that this was French General fabric and I love French General fabric. So I named it the French General Goes to Big Sky Country. <laughs> After the girls that taught me how to make this quilt, they were absolutely darling. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> um, back in 2014, I went to Ireland on a tour that was a little over two weeks. And I thought, OK, I'm going to find a quilt shop in Ireland. So I went online, and I found the Lemrick Quilt Show, Shop. And it was in Lemrick, right on the Shannon River. So I looked everything up, and I emailed them and told them when I was coming. And as soon as we got to our hotel, my girlfriend Carol and I threw our stuff in the room, and we went down to the concierge, and I said, I need a cab. She goes, where are you going? And I said, to the Lemrick Quilt Center. And she goes, what? I said, it's a quilt shop in Lemrick. I have to go. The pattern was folded up in my purse, and I went. So we called them and told them the Americans were coming. <laughs> And we did, and they served hot tea, little biscuits, cookies. I couldn't believe it. We were the only ones in the store. It was absolutely fantastic. So I made the quilt. My girlfriend never made hers, but I made mine, and it looks like a little trellis. Once again, it's that pattern that's a four-patch posy. You chop it up. You put the pins in it, get them all to match up, and I just think it's adorable. And so I hang this on the back of my sofa in the living room where nobody sits um, because I don't want anybody to mess this quilt up. I love it. I'm never going back there again. But um, this is from Ireland, this fabric. And um, those girls were absolutely darling. They really were. In 2016, I went on a uh, a long trip. I went for two and a half weeks to Alaska and the Yukon. So it was 10 days on land and like six days on the boat. So I, once again, I got a pattern, folded it up, and I said, okay, the quilt shops in Alaska are amazing because a friend of mine had been there twice already and she said, you're going to love it. So I go, okay, let's make a project. Uh, let's make pine trees um, from our Alaskan fabric. So we did, both of it, she finished hers and put it in the quilt show last year, and it turned out beautiful. So this, um, this is the pine trees, and the, all the fabric came from five different quilt shops in Alaska, and I have them all listed on the back where we went, but yeah, can you believe that? It's so fun. Yeah, it's just, it's just it was a very simple um, pattern, once again, jelly rolls, which we cut our own because we use so many different fabrics um, from five different quilt shops. And then mine is all quilted with moose and um, trees, and my girlfriends are with bears and trees. So on the back, there's a label somewhere on the bottom that lists. There's my bear. <laughs> with all of the quilt shops that we went to, there were five of them. It was really fun. So I got home and got right on that. <laughs> but um, on my little antique bed, which I just finished recently, um, I had to um, paint it. It was terrible. Um, I have some doll quilts that I made. Um, this one I made, and it's just a little medallion quilt, and I um, hand um, quilted it. So I do have hand quilting up here. So this is hand quilted that I made. Yes, I did. I hand quilted that. And um, this is another one that I made with feed sacks, pink and brown again. I'm so stuck on that. So I hand quilted in the feed sack. And you can see I put the sugar sack, okay? <laughs> and this was called Caitlin's Kite. That's my granddaughter. Um, I don't have any daughters. I only had sons and grandsons. So this is Caitlin's Kite. So these are little kites. So I hand quilted this. Then I decided I would make another pink and brown quilt. And uh, it was so squared up that all of the um, quilting in it is circles. And I hand quilted all of this. And you can see the back. All hand quilted. My hands can't do the hand quilting very well. I work with my hands all day with instruments. And they are so tired. You know, I have to still work, so I really can't hand quilt. It's too painful. I'm starting to get arthritis, so the machine is fine for me. This one um, is also hand quilted, this little doll quilt here. I named this one Reproduction Row. 
This one um, is hand quilted also, just little pieces here. This is called the table. I don't know why, it just looked like a table with chairs around it. I made one for my mother also. Um, this was leftover fabric that I had made. Um, I have a quilt on my bed with purples and pinks. Uh, purple's my favorite color. Um, this is the Princess Diaries. And that's machine quilted. A friend of mine is learning how to do it, so she's been doing a few of mine. Here's a simple one that was um, done with just leftover fabric that I had. Um, I do embroidery. I don't have a lot of embroidery stuff with me. Um, I, did not, I did a little quilting in the corners. I tied it, and then I embroidered this. It's called Mama's Clothes. The little girl has her mom's clothes on. So I did um, the embroidery in the center of it, and then I made little twisters around the outside of it. I like anything that looks old, you know, like the coloring book kind of pictures you can embroidery. Uh, here's another one I did. Love me two, this was Love Me Two Times, and I just tied it with beads. And there is some quilting of hearts around the borders of it. But then Love Me Two Times, my little label. And then um, this one here is just Hugs and Kisses. It was a little Valentine um, thing we did in Civil War, so I named it The Last Kiss. There's lips on the bottom of it, my <laughs> label. We were putting it together. I didn't know how it was going to look, but it, it turned out pretty cute. Okay. Here's another little um, project for Civil War I did. Okay. How long does it take you to make one of those? Something like this. A day. Nope. Well, I won't do anything else. <laughs> the food's in the crock pot, you know. When I'm not at work, when I'm not at work, I'm in my sewing room. I am playing. I had so much fun making these things. This was, um, this is um, port wine and cheese and crackers. These, this was a little quilt that we made in um, Civil War Sewing Circle. These are supposed to represent crackers, and so I was having a blast because I was stripping them and cutting them, and I made four because I had so many crackers. So um, I gave one as a, um, a um, birthday gift. I have another, I have two more at home that um, because, and I gave a lot of my crackers away because I had too many. Uh, I, I just, I, I didn't even know how many I'd had because you just strip them and cut and then you have a lot of the same so I had to mix them all up. And um, then I have some wool things, I made a mattress. <laughs> for my old bed. Um, like I said, I love to work with wool. It's, I, I love it. Um, here's a little wool project I did, a little um, table mat with the black crow. Um, I made the Merry Christmas holly leaf with the wool. I have a ton of wool at home. I'm working on a lot of projects. Okay, I'll take over here. So this, um, this one right here has, was made originally with just cotton, but I had to add some wool to it. And there's a designer by Linen Closet Designs. Her name is Dawn Heese. And I just saw her again uh, in Springfield, Missouri at a quilt show. She's from Columbia, Missouri. And she's done several things for Quilt Mania now. She's traveled to France and has done the covers of the magazine. She's incredible. She's a country girl. Um, I love her. She's like my new best friend, but I have several of her books, so I'm making a lot of her stuff. And she called them squash because she's sick of everything being a pumpkin. <laughs> so I made it too, and then I showed her pictures uh, on my phone of all my stuff that I've made of hers, and she was just like, oh my gosh. You know, I'm, not, I'm really not stalking you. I just really <laughs> love what you do. Um, so that's, that's got wool on it. Uh, here's my little Halloween kitty cat. It's named Maggie May. Um, that's my cat's name. Yes, yes. 
Yeah, I, I, a lot of my stuff is named after rock songs. I love it. Um, here's a little Halloween one that I just found recently. I started it about maybe seven or eight years ago, and I found it. So I wanted to finish it. I had done this part, and I, this was all in pieces. So it's just a little Halloween um, wall hanging. I put little sleeves on almost everything so I can hang it. Can you read what it says? Yes, it says, witch's broom of pointed and pointed hat, midnight's glow and hissing cats, casting spells and you shall see the spookiest night on Halloween Eve. And theirs didn't have wool on it, but mine does. And then old buttons, I love old buttons. Um, this is another leftover fabric quilt, just fabric I had left over. I decided to make this little piece and then put the wool medallion in the middle. Um, this is kind of sad. Um, my mom was diagnosed with uh, chronic myeloid leukemia and when we found out I went to her doctor with her the very first time and so I sat with her in the hospital while she got bone marrow mm -hmm. testing and everything. It was awful but I had to do something. So I had made this, um, this piece and so I sat there and I uh, applique on this wool bird and um, on the branch, and I just sat there with her. It was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up giving it to her someday, but yeah, it was one of those days, you know, you just have to do something with your hands or you'll lose it. So that was my hospital project. And then this was another one. Um, this one is um, Hazy Shade of Winter. It's just kind of gray, but I liked it, so I, um, added the medallion in the middle and lighten it up with the green and the blue. So. Um, let's see. Well, that's just about it. And I have some miniatures that I've done up here. The pineapple pattern that's kind of like a doll quilt. And the last thing is um, in 2015, um, I made the raffle quilt for our guild and Mary Lou Hogan applicated and Jane Coons quilted it and there was a lady there that in the guild she moved away but she said why don't you submit that to Paducah I said I don't know how to do that and I'm scared and she said I will help you and she did and she wrote up a nice um, letter and everything and she showed me how to ship it we did that from my house and we shipped it off and it got accepted so that was unbelievable so our guild it represented our guild but I made it in Mary Lou and Jane. So it was in Paducah, and here's, it's in the book, and I've got some pictures of close-ups, but it was a real honor for our guild to be represented in Paducah. Um, some of the members in our guild have had quilts there. I never have, because I don't want to bother with it. It's scary. But um, it was there, and I've got some paperwork to show everybody if they want to see it. So this is, um, I'm representing the Fire Valley Quilt Guild. Would you like to join? <laughs> Anybody? So, um, I also brought some of my handmade wool pins that I've made. Um, they're designed by myself. Oh, I forgot. Here's my wool quilt that won the best of show, um, 2011. It hangs on my uh, wall in my living room. This was the quilt that was behind me at the quilt show when I was the feature quilters that some people saw. And, that's how I got invited to this. So yeah, it was in the paper. <laughs> it was crazy. So anyway, that's the picture. I can't bring the quilt. I'm never taking it away from the house again. But uh, I took a picture of it and put it in an old frame. So. And then my things that I make by hand. So thanks, guys, for coming. This was fun. Thank you. Thank you.